Well, I have a fantastic surprise for you of a great friend of mine, Heather Tarun from Atwood Cafe in Chicago. Yes, thank you. Atwood or Atwood Cafe? Atwood Cafe. Atwood Cafe. It's Did actually they're... named after Charles Atwood, a famous architect in Chicago. You see, there's a reason for everything <laughs> that we do. Now, what I love about you is your personality. Thank you so much. And I'm afraid that it will completely outshine the wonderfulness of this uh, dish. Also because you made a particular choice about the type of fish that it is. Yes. Instead of me talking about it, yes. why don't I get you started? Great. And you show me because you have a series of steps. And we I do. want everybody at home to see what you do. I know it sounds extensive, this So what recipe. are you making for us? Tell us. What we're going to make, we're going to do a grilled Arctic char. Okay. With chipotle barbecue sauce. We're going to make a jicama salad. Okay and a really fresh and delicious mango pineapple salsa. Oh, I like this. I know, it's summer, so who Go doesn't want it. this? Go for it, looking forward to so it. So let's start the barbecue sauce. Uh, is it hot enough this to is hot. for you? This is hot, it's just a saucepan, you could do it, you could even do it in a saute pan if you need to. No problem. So we're gonna put a little bit of oil inside the pan okay. to get it going. So we need to saute the onions and the garlic. There you are. So let's start that, this is just diced onion. And you like to go right away with a high heat, or you like to go with soft, medium you know, heat? You I or? like to sweat the onion, which I don't want any color on these onions at all. Okay. I want to make sure that they're going to they're gonna soften and they're going to become translucent. Perfect. So we're going to let that cook for just a second here, and then we're going to add the garlic. I wouldn't add the garlic first, because the garlic might have a tendency to burn. Okay. And the taste of burnt garlic, as you know, now, for unpleasant. those of you watching at home, we're not going to do this in exactly real time, but we want you to be aware of the direction that uh, uh, Heather is giving us. So if she was at a restaurant, she would take a little bit longer time, but let's assume right. that the onions now are soft and nicely, exactly to where we want to have it. Right. So then, then you add the garlic. It's getting a little aromatic. You can smell it. At this point, we're going to add the mustard powder. Now, a lot of times when you have dried herbs or spices, a lot their flavors are not released until heat. You know, I'm looking contact. at this mustard powder because I'm about to smile. <laughs> Every time we have dry ingredients to be added because we prepare them before, yes. they stick to it. Let's see if this one does or does well, let's not. Let's see. Oh, magic. Ah, <laughs> okay, magic has chai. happened, so we're okay. You've done wonderful. So, wonderful aroma, by the way, that's it's, it's fantastic, and this really is something you can make ahead. Mm -hmm. You can store it in your refrigerator, and you can use it for many different applications. Fabulous. So this, uh, this is a great sauce for the day before. Definitely. A lot of these things you can make the day before except for the fish. Okay. Absolutely. So we're going to add a little bit of red chili flake, Not as much all. or as little as you want. I'm going to add probably about half of this, it looks like, because we're also going to add chipotles. You are a spicy personality. Well, i got to say that about you. <laughs> I try. I think you work in the restaurant business, you got to be a, a little bit spicy. You have a wonderful way about you. We were just enjoying you uh, with the rest of the uh, crew. Thank uh, you. Just a what is that you have in here? This is molasses. I okay. love molasses. Bringing this, a little bit of sweetness. A little bit well. of sweetness. It adds, you know, you don't need much, and it's going to add this depth to the sauce right. that um, is unlike any other. When you're making barbecue sauces, I always like to add a little molasses or honey, something along those lines. I like the deep dark color that's bringing out already. It's gonna be fantastic. And the balance with the chipotles is gonna be delicious. So we're gonna add Worcestershire sauce, okay. which that's a funny word, isn't say it? Say that again. Worcestershire sauce, is that how you, you say know, it? I don't know. This is the fifth episode I use <laughs> the Starn product. I still cannot pronounce the name. So we try. So there in goes the Worcestershire sauce, and at this point now we're going to add some dark brown sugar. And we love that. It's delicious. It's got that great, it balances nicely with the molasses. And then these are chipotle chilies. Are you familiar with these? I'm actually, I must tell you, it is not part of my background. Uh, it's not background. really. They don't use them I, much in Italy, no, I don't think. No, they don't. But when I saw it, I said, this is going to be a good opportunity for me to learn. Because, well, chipotle uh, is a smoked jalapeno, okay. which a lot of people don't know. And it always comes in a, in a great sauce called an adobo sauce. So they come canned. You can find them in your Hispanic section of the regular grocery store. Everybody seems to have them. I know they're very prevalent in Chicago because we have a very big Hispanic but, uh, community. But I think all over the country, the Latino all community the is just about everywhere. They're really changing Absolutely. a lot of the things that we do and how we do it, and we love that. Exactly. Uh, there's something about uh, Latino eating and cooking that is not what you see in the chain right. stores. That is a personality, a sensitivity, right. a beauty to it that really not brought out uh, properly for the way it is, and I see that you have a, a great deal of sensitivity to that. Well, I, I love Hispanic food, and you know, a lot of my staff is Hispanic, and we, you know, they bring a lot of items in that I've never seen before. A wonderful before. team effort, isn't it's, it? Great? It's amazing. So, this is just ketchup. Yes. Um, which, we'll get this out of the way. You know, you should use probably a certain brand. I'm not going to say which. You're a rascal, and so. <laughs> so, we just put in the ketchup, okay. and we're going to season it with some coarse black pepper okay. and some kosher salt. All right. So we're we gonna do. We're gonna bring this to a boil yes. at home, so or you're gonna simmer it. 
Simmer. Just gonna let it. I w don't let it come to a full rolling boiler. It's gonna splatter all over your kitchen. But before we use the grill pan, yes. uh, give us a flow here on. Uh, okay. What is this? I love this fish. It, it doesn't even look real, to tell you the truth. I, it looks. It looks kind of like it's magical. What a beautiful color. I mean, this is the natural aspect of what this is all about. Well, this is Arctic char, and a lot. It comes from Alaska. It's a great alternative to salmon or trout. It's mm -hmm. actually. If they uh, came together and had a baby, they would make Arctic char. So it's a, it's got kind of the, the characteristics of trout and salmon. Try not to be intimidated by the fish. Okay. I know the home cook. Sometimes you, you, you can, you can just get it. You're gonna fillet it yourself. It's pretty simple. They've already cleaned it nicely for us. All right. So all we're gonna do is just trim this little belly piece off right here, and just use a very, very sharp knife and go all the way down the Excellent. inside of the fish. We'll set the scraps aside. And if there's anything here that's left as well um, from the fins, we can clean it up nicely. This is most impressive. You already gotten down to a wonderful, beautiful form. Well, this way you're going to be with. able to make beautiful fillets. You do about what, five ounces, about six ounces? About five ounces. Yeah, I think five ounces is great. I'm going to cut it at an angle. Okay. And out of this fillet, we're going to get three equal portions. Excellent. I'm just going to trim the tail a little bit as well. All right. So you'll see the fish has this beautiful color. Almost a diamond pattern too. Almost a diamond pattern. what a pattern. combination with the colors. And what I'm gonna do as well is I'm just gonna pinch the fish and I'm gonna just take my knife and just very lightly, we're gonna score the skin. You made a point of saying pinching the fish. No, continue, continue. Yes. But tell me why pinching it. It makes it easier it for you to grab It makes it easier the... to cut the, f the skin without, without going really going into the flesh. I get you, very and important point. The reason why we do this is because when it cooks, we don't want the fish to curl. Excellent. And it'll make a nice even piece. Now, so, are you going to brush it with olive oil, or yes. are you just going to put it just like that? Or I'm going to put, put some olive oil on both sides. You can use canola oil as well if you want to. Mm -hmm. And it's the pan is pretty hot, but let's put some insurance out on it. And we will brush the <laughs> grill lightly. <laughs> <laughs> because the last thing you want is your fish to stick to no, the pan. You know what makes me laugh? <laughs> it's the, like a tray talk that you hear in the restaurant <laughs> kitchen that sneaks out every once in a while. I think we'll cook all these these three oh, fillets go for just it. in case we make a mistake. There's we a have lot of extras. people here that will love to have a piece of one of them as a matter of fact got my name on it. <laughs> this pan needs to be very, very hot. All right. You can do this inside. It's great if you can do it outside on a grill. You can use a gas grill or a charcoal grill. Okay. What you want to remember is you do not want to move the fish at this point. You want to let it release on its own, or the fish is going to stick to the pan. It's going to look unpleasant, and that's not something that you're going to want. All right, I'm going to make a challenge to you. Okay. The challenge is, I know that you have a wonderful salad that's going to go. Yes. Now, imagine me, I'm your boss. We're okay. in the restaurant. The orders are coming through. I say, look at this horrible thing. This oh is my a gosh. jicama, right? This is a jicama. And I say, okay, I know that this is going to ingredients. Can yes. you make me this in three minutes? I can make you this Show in three minutes. Show me what minutes. to do. All right, so let's move this bowl. This is a jicama. Okay. And it's a cross between like an apple and a potato. It's used a lot in Hispanic cultures, and it's eaten raw. Right. We're just going to cut it into... About quarter inch pieces. I'm timing you, you know. Okay. I give you three minutes to put the whole <laughs> thing together. Now keep all the fingers. I need We're going to keep all the fingers and we're just going to trim it into like matchstick type pieces. All now, right. luckily, we have some already ready. So. Go put them in there. I got the whole thing ready. All right. For you. Excellent. Now. So here, let's put the vinaigrette in first. All right. So this is a little bit of honey. All right. And you can do this while you, the fish is cooking and you'll see how simple. Pardon me this is to put together. There's some cider vinegar, we have honey, we have lime juice, and a little bit of cayenne pepper. Now, if you don't want to use cayenne, I'm just going to put in a little bit. The spice is going to be a little bit spicy for the barbecue sauce. Great. So just whisk that up. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. And then everything is prepared ahead of time, so let's just start oh, putting it scallions. in. Scallions. Cilantro. Or, yep. Red pepper. Red peppers. We have jicama. Cilantro. Yep, we have uh, like chili a kid. I'm like I'm playing with a kid here. Red <laughs> onion. I mean, I feel like I'm building a sandcastle. It is. What is this? What that is this? That is radishes. You know, these babies are spicy. It's, they are a little spicy and just julienne carrots. All right. So you'll see that took minutes to make. It's really all in the preparation ahead of time. We're just going to toss the vegetables with the vinaigrette. Okay. And we're going to set it aside. All right, excellent. What's the next thing that we're going to so be So the doing? next thing we're going to do, we're going to take a peek at the fish, and we're going to see if it's ready to be flipped over. And you can see it's got beautiful grill marks on it. Gorgeous. And we're going to brush it with a little bit of our finished barbecue sauce. And so that's right here. We're going to brush it on this side, 
It's going to take about four minutes for the other side. Oh, look at that color. Isn't that gorgeous? It's gorgeous. And once you, if you do this outside as well, you're going to get this beautiful caramelization. It, it's going to be really fantastic. All right, I'll, uh, what's the next thing that we need to do? Because you have one more bit of preparation. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to make the mango and pineapple slaw or salad. All right. Salsa. You call it a salsa? We call it a salsa. We call it a salad. I love salsas. I think they're fresh. I think they're delicious. And what? What do you mean there? <laughs> they're going in. All right. So you we call have them some, out as you go. All right. We have some. We have what? Pineapple in there? This is diced pineapple. You have the mango. I just put in a jalapeno. This is. Uncooperative mango. What oh am I going to do? Goodness. I'm panicking. Just, I don't know what to do. Just, oh my God. Just oh. use your hand. Just oh, use you your must hand. be a professional just chef. Just use your hand. So we have some diced cucumber. Yes. We have some red pepper. You know, you actually do not lose it under pressure. <laughs> you are so cool. And we have the secret ingredient, which is mint. Okay. What this, is this, by the way? That's lime juice, fresh squeezed lime juice. We're going to use a little bit of salt and pepper. We're going to stir it, and it's finished. This well, is all you do. We are going to be back in just a second. We're going to show you exactly how to plate this, okay? Stay with us. I love the way you really hold the fish as if it was a baby. <laughs> well, Hi. <laughs> go, go, put it in. She's going to put it delicately. We already have the ikama salad in the bottom. Uh, yes. And this is truly what makes it interesting. Go ahead. Show me exactly you present it when you make it at the restaurant. It's so pretty the way you have it. So the ikama salad's down. We put the beautiful grilled fish on top. Okay. Then we're going to put some of this really fresh salsa any way you want to. You don't have to be so careful with it. Great, it's salsa. Great. So that's going to go right there. We're just going to take a little bit of the extra barbecue sauce that we had reserved from before. And I'm just going to use a spoon. Yeah, we're just going to put it right around. As you can see, my friends, this is going to take you less than uh, any possible time you could imagine. Not even 30 seconds. This is so easy to make. And this is just some sliced green onion, which we can just use. And in use no time at all, you just made this one look exactly as a masterpiece. And it is a masterpiece. <laughs> thank you. On behalf you. of myself and all of our friends, I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you You're so an absolute much. delight. Thank to you. To you at home, join us next week once again for one more set of great recipes. From all of us to you, arrivederci e grazie. Ciao.